It's a platform to gain notoriety where it normally takes years to build up. It helps create an initial pool of financial equity that may or may not be recovered over time. Many found and will find success in the platform, but only a few will keep living on. Designer Notes, Subject 78. Last episode, we talked about a few microbrands who worth your attention. I actually left out one of them, and the more that I dove into this one's design, the more I realized that it deserves its own episode. Here's why the Dumero DM01 is more than just an homage to 60s and 70s watches. Like, comment, and subscribe for content you'd like to see next. Follow us at Instagram at Design Atelier Aruba for behind-the-scenes content. Email us at Design Atelier Viewer at gmail.com. The case measures at 38.6 mm in diameter without the crown. About the same from lug bend to lug bend, which is quite interesting since this means that we are looking at a true square profile. This profile is not perceivable due to the actual lug tips measuring at 46.7 mm. Speaking of the lugs, its overall width is 22.7 mm from side to side. This information is virtually not relevant since you cannot change these integrated bracelets for another one anyway. The first thing to appreciate in this watch is the thinness of the case. By not having a sapphire crystal case back, the case is constructed as thin as possible that is a welcome feature for many classical watch fans out there. The overall thinness is just 9.75mm including the sapphire crystal. The crown is screwed down so there is a significant water resistance 100 meters, for a sporty dress watch. Going down to the bracelet, it has a very pronounced taper from 22mm to 16 This is another classical design aesthetic that aids in the wearability of the watch. The movement is a Japanese workhorse movement, the Miyota 9039. This one only has two steps on the crown, meaning there is no ghost date. So, since there is no date on the dial, they use the correct movement for the watch. It has a 42 hour power reserve, 24 joules in construction, and beats a very smooth 28,000 vibrations per hour. Even though the movement is Japanese, the watch is designed and assembled in California, USA. As much as it's an American watch, it does feel very Swiss in design. First impressions would always lead us, however vaguely familiar you are in the watch world, to the Royal Oak. But once you put AP's flagship beside this newcomer, the similarities start to gradually diminish. The first thing that reminds us of the Royal Oak is the waffle dial. The DM01s is not a straight grid, but more like a grenade pattern that's grained more finely in a near guilloche channeling. This pattern resembles what we see in the Aquanaut. By combining the Aquanaut's playful dial pattern with the bursted grid dial of the Royal Oak, the DM01 manages to create its own signature even though it's a clear amalgam of iconic sports watches. The indexes also has more similarities with that of the Nautilus than of the Royal Oak. They are very angular, opposed to AP's curved pointed markers. These are coated with BGW9 loom. There are some micro baton gradations on the DM01's perimeter, while the Nautilus has small plots. These small batons make the dial seem a little smaller and diverts your eyes to the center of the dial. There is minimal branding, which is very welcome since this already has enough character on the dial surface. The text also follows the subtle curves of the dial, which is pretty admirable, considering they could have cut costs here by merely printing on top of a block badge, like how we typically see on cheap homages from the Orient. The hands are very generic sword hands that are passable enough, but the more I look closer at it, the more I wish that these were squared off to better have continuity with the indexes and the rest of the watch. 
The soft square bezel of the DM01 continues the curves seen on the dial. It has a vertical brush that matches the rest of the case's brush finish. In between these brushed facets is a mirror polished side that not only gives the height to the watch without adding heft, if I may add, but also breaks the surface with its beautifully polished facets. Just below this bezel is also a polished chamfer that runs parallel to the gorgeous bezel. These sides are broken with a very deep channel that fools your eyes with additional thinness. These polished facets run all the way to the bracelets giving a very nice light play that I'm sure will delight sports watch lovers out there. At the edges of the case is the stooping lug facets that carry the integrated bracelet. As for the surface area, these facets far eclipse those of the Royal Oaks, giving it a far more aggressive shape than actually pairs well with the bezel sides. Going down to the bracelet, it delivers the same vertical brush finish found in the case with both the H links and middle links exhibiting the same texture. These are separated with polished chamfers in between that's so deep that it practically makes the links more trapezoidal than the conventional rectangle. It's pretty apparent by now that slimness is the focus of this timepiece, and all the lines and shapes on this bracelet is obedient to that mantra. Down to the clasp design, the preference for unobtrusiveness is noticeable. Casper of Ghost Watches made a very detailed hands-on review of the watch, featuring this clasp that's not seen yet elsewhere. This is a friction fit clasp. Many dislike anything friction fit since these break down in time and owners generally lose confidence on their functionality. Hopefully, this is refined enough by the time of production. Now here's where all of us can pitch in. Production will begin soon after the Kickstarter goal is met. You can support this watch at an affordable $395. It's a truly beautiful watch that's almost half the price of a competing, but yet to be released, Tissot PRX Automatic. Deliveries are expected to ship in June 2021. However, we only have about 7 days left to rally around this great design and humble company from California. It's a watch that manages to embody the sports watch aesthetics that we know and love without the enthusiast trappings of homage watches. It has a clever design that manages to stand out from the rest of the Kickstarter offerings. But time is running out on this one, and here's hoping the next time we see this watch again is for an actual hands-on review. Special thanks to Casper of Ghost Watches for making a fantastic review of this watch. For a detailed hands-on review of the DM01, head on over to the link in the description below for Casper's video. While you're at it, subscribe to Ghost Watches and give Casper some love he deserves for all the great content he offers.